Let's look more into activity and see how it can be used to define the chemical potential. Okay, so we saw that for um, vapors, like if we're thinking about the saturated vapor or the vapor pressure above a mixed liquid, that we could define the activity as the ratio of the pressure of the vapor above a solution to the vapor pressure of the pure solution, or for condensed phases in terms of fugacity. It turns out, though, that the activity is a function of the composition, though. And so it's actually helpful, then, to define the activity in the following way. And I'm going to use I as a subscript here because the K is sort of hard to write, and I don't want it to get confused with these other symbols here. So it doesn't really matter if we have K or I. This is just saying for this particular species. But we're going to define the activity as the product of the activity coefficient and the composition. Okay, So this would be the activity, let's say that we have a copper and gold solution, there would be the activity of copper and there would be the activity of gold and these would be specific to this binary system, right? And each of these would be defined then as the product of the activity coefficient for that species and its composition. The activity A is unitless. The activity coefficient is also unitless. So this is our activity coefficient. And like A, it is unitless. So just as we said before that the activity tells us something about the solution behavior, based on this ratio, really it's the activity coefficient that holds all of the real information. So the activity coefficient will tell us um, whether this is greater than 1 or less than 1 or equal to 1, sort of how the activity compares to the composition of the system. We will also see how the activity compares to delta H of mixing through uh, the activity coefficient gamma. So this is related to the enthalpy of mixing. And really, the enthalpy of mixing depends on the bond energies of the mixed solution. So let's consider a few different cases, taking a closer look at this and see what it tells us about the system. So let's consider case one here where gamma is equal to 1. So this is the easiest case, right? If this is true, then the activity is equal to x. This is the case when all bond energies are equal. And we saw this in our example earlier of partial pressure, right? Where now we replace A with x in our pressure equation, right? So when we considered the case of A, B liquids mixing together, we said that the pressure was just equal to the mole fraction times this pressure, right? And let me just put these all back to I. I don't want this to get too confusing here. But when I write the x's and then I write the K, I think that can be hard to follow. Okay, so this was case one. Gamma is equal to one, and the outcome here is that all the bond energies are equal. A and B atoms don't really care who they're interacting with. Okay, our second case is that gamma is greater than one, which means that the activity is greater than the composition, right? So what we can think about here is that the, for this particular component, 
it acts as if the solution has more of it in there, right? So this is sometimes why this is called an activity. So it acts as if there is more of the component. Than there is. And if we think about our uh, liquid in a closed container example, then we could see that this would mean that it's easier for our A atoms to escape, right? Because it seems like there's more in terms of the evaporation that's happening at the surface it seems like there are more A atoms because more of them are escaping, but that's really just because of the bond conditions which makes it easier for A atoms to escape. We can say that this corresponds to AB bonds being less favorable which corresponds to an enthalpy of mixing greater than zero. And then our third case, let's just make room on here. Our third case is essentially the opposite of number two. Here, gamma is less than one. A is less than X. It acts as if there is less. So it acts as if there is less A than there really is. So the evaporation of A will be happening more slowly because it seems like there's less there. This means that AB bonds are favored. Or that the enthalpy of mixing is less than zero. Okay, so to get at our phase diagram, which is where we are trying to go with all of this, we're trying to establish conditions for a two-component, two-phase system, right? We have to do that with the chemical potential. And the chemical potential we are going to define in terms of the activity. We can't measure chemical potential, but we can do this in terms of the activity, okay? so. Remember that the chemical potential is defined as the partial molar Gibbs free energy, keeping the temperature and the pressure and the moles of other stuff constant. We can also write this in this way. So we can't, like I said, measure mu directly. Um, but we can actually measure basically the activity coefficient. And so we define then the chemical potential in terms of the activity. And we do that in the following way. So the difference between the chemical potential in the solution and the chemical potential of the pure species, this is delta mu i, and we define this as RT times the natural log of the activity, okay? And so we can also write this like this in terms of the activity coefficient, okay? Just sort of as a last note here, we can define the chemical potential according to other energy functions. So there are other definitions of the chemical potential that I just want to point out. We will not use them, but we need to know that they exist. So we could also define the chemical potential as the change in the internal energy as a function of the number of moles. But in this case, what we have to hold constant because of how U is defined, our S and V and the number of moles of other species. So the difference here, you'll notice, 
is what's held constant, and it's only a partial molar property if t and p are constant. Okay. So the takeaway here from this slide is this line right here, which defines the chemical potential in terms of the activity or in terms of the activity coefficient. And this will let us then understand how our system behaves and whether or not mixing will occur.